So, uh, a couple years ago, it was announced they were going to do a remake of Suspiria. And uh, I'm generally, at this point, I'm just like, of course, they're going to remake everything. That's what I'm they kind do. Of, I'm indifferent to it. I'm not like, there's still people, I can't believe they're going to remake RoboCop. It's like, of course, they're going to remake RoboCop. They don't have any ideas anymore. I don't, yeah, I, I'm not surprised by anything. But no. this, uh, the Suspiria one in particular, I wasn't angry about it, but I was sort of like, what's the point? Right. Because a lot of remakes, it's like, okay, you, you tell the story in a different way. Mm -hmm. And that's what can separate it. But with Suspiria, what makes the original movie what it is, is completely 100% the filmmaking. Definitely not the story. No, there's, there's barely, barely a story, story there. there. <laughs> and the more I thought about it in that context, it's just the lack of story is a huge asset. It it's turns like, out to be. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing is... Uh, Suspiria 2018 was my favorite movie of 2018. Uh, I don't know if this is controversial. I like it more than the original, Ooh. which is kind of unfair because they're so drastically different. They movies. really, they really are. It's, I mean, it's hardly a remake. Yeah, it's well, just, it, it it's is a, in the sense. I mean, it hits all the story beats just about. Just about. But it feels like such a different movie. Yeah, it's so radically different that it's. It's hard to look at it as a remake, even if even if it does do those beats. It's, yeah. it's, it comes at them in such a, it's such a different way. Yeah. What it what it does the smart thing that it does and what it does really well is it takes all the the threadbare story elements of the original and really fleshes them out. Mm -hmm. uh, where the original movie takes place at a dance academy, but there's like you mentioned, there's one scene where they're dancing. Yeah. And this movie, the new one, <laughs> is all about the dancing. Very much. The dancing um, is key central. Yes, that's what the the fucking movie is about. Yeah. But uh it also is the whole movie is almost like the inverse of the original. Mm -hmm. Where it's like the original is very like colorful and unrealistic visually, and, and the score is very bombastic and huge. The new one, the the, the remake, uh, everything is stripped down. Yeah, very it drab. Is, it is stylistic, but mm -hmm. it's very like grounded in reality. The score is very kind of minimal and pretty. And I mean, that's the thing. That's the thing. Is it's so there's so much more going on in the story that the the score doesn't have to carry the load mm -hmm. that it does in the 1977 movie. So I totally. Like, that works in its favor as well. Yeah. Which, have we even mentioned Tom York yet? We, we mentioned the music, but he did the score for the film. Yeah. Which is like, when I, that was another thing before the movie came out where they're like, Tom York's doing the score. I'm like, what? That's different. Okay. Like, well. You have my attention for being different, I guess. If he does as well as his band made, it'll be good. Yeah. And I mean, the, guy's this, good at movies. <laughs> <laughs> the soundtrack to this movie is, like we said, it's like the polar opposite of the Goblin score. Yeah. Um, but then what surprised me is that there's actual songs mm -hmm. throughout the movie. There's the opening song that's just called Suspiriorum that is a really wonderful song. And yeah. there's a couple other good ones throughout the film. This is about about it. You wouldn't think that it would be a context where you could actually fit like a vocal song. Yeah. But it, it works. does work very, works very well. Absolutely. Um, the original is about the visuals more so than the story, and the, the remake is all story. Most of it feels like a like a period drama yeah. that just happens to have witches in it. <laughs> From almost the beginning, where I was talking about the locale of the original movies, it's like, yeah, it's in Germany, but nah, doesn't really matter. Yeah. It's crucial. To it's, the remake yeah. because it's it's you know Bauer Meinhof and everything is going on. It's the and first dissonance. thing you see in the movie, yeah, <laughs> is people in the foreground uh, in front of Chloe Grace Moretz, just, yeah. yeah, just fighting in the streets. Yeah, so um, even that is you know completely fleshed out. Don't you know what's happening here? The hijackers are negotiating a release to stop my prisoners tonight. A lot of the secrets that that hide at the end of, of the original movie are just right on the open. This yeah. isn't going to be a mystery thing. This isn't going to be like, ooh, there's something spooky in the woods. What is it? No, here's the witch. Yeah. The original Suspiria, it spends the whole movie building up. What's going on? Why are things weird? Oh, there's witches. Here it's like, here's the witches. Here's how they operate. The whole movie is about their kind of uh, power structure. Right. Uh, the movie... It focuses so much more on them than the students. Yes, uh, and it takes place uh, uh, in Berlin, uh, directly at the Berlin Wall. The Dance Academy is directly right across from the Berlin Wall, <laughs> which I, I can't imagine is a coincidence uh, in referencing the film Possession. No. Another one of my favorite movies, and both of them use the, the Berlin Wall as kind of a, a, a visual representation of this smaller kind of divide between the, the witches and their sort of allegiance. There's Madame Blanc and Madame Marcos. Tout est fini. Tout 
was to be there. Mother Marcus. There's a scene where they're kind of uh, voting on who will be they're planning this big ceremony to, to resurrect the spirit of Mother Suspiriorum. And uh, most of the witches side with Madame Marcos and Madame Blanc is Tilda Swinton. Yes. So there's this, this kind of, uh, it's very political, it's very you know, mm. divisive, which is of course visually represented by the Berlin Wall. There it is. Yeah. But, but before we continue, we generally don't care about spoilers too much on uh, review, but this is a relatively it's new movie. 2018 2018, film. so you if you haven't have seen, seen it, it, it seems to be very divisive. Uh, not just amongst, because there's like, when a movie like The Witch or It uh, Comes at Night comes out and it gets really great critical reviews, but then a general audience sees it and goes, that was boring. Yeah. Uh, but this seems to be divisive, even amongst people that like this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. The very sort of slow, uh, methodical, kind of atmospheric. With so some, I love it, but I, a lot of people just not even think it's boring, just flat out hate it. Yeah, I loved it um, as well. So yeah, but so uh, we'll get into it more, but just heads up, spoilers from here on out. There's no way around it. There's no way to talk <laughs> about this movie and compare it to the original without getting into spoilers. Yeah. So instead of being this kind of blank canvas, Susie is someone who's been dancing her whole life and has this goal of getting into this school. Yes. Uh, it's played by Dakota Johnson, who I barely knew anything about from she's in those fucking Fifty Shades movies. I'm like, yeah. She does an amazing job. She's great. But she's already, like, initially, like, oh, she's a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, there's the initial scene where they're like, we want to see you dance. I prefer dancing without music. Thank you, sure. <laughs> You can keep time in your head, yes? Uh, but we're not going to play music. You have to dance to no music. <laughs> and it's this amazing choreography. Yeah. It's so uh, uh, kind of physical. <sighs> but it's also, without the music, it looks like The Exorcist or something. It it's looks really like she's striking. Possessed by a demon. Depending on how used you are to, to, to modern dance in general, if you've seen any of it, like I haven't seen a whole lot, but I've seen a little bit is kind of like, was, was evolving into in that, you know, post-war era, which yeah. is kind of stuck through now. I mean, it's evolved a little more since then, but it's a very physical thing. And it, it's, it's, it's not like a ballet. It's yeah. not like, it's, it's really intense, or it can be really intense, or it can be really funny. <laughs> and, you know, that's part of her performance overall is that she's never not giving 100% in the in the dance performances like yeah. in the character as well as as actor um, but she she's got this intensity in the in the performance that's really striking we've already known we already know that this is a school run by witches yeah and so not only is dancing integral to the the story but it's i i just love the fact that it's it's how they do their ceremonies it's like how they conduct spells yeah <laughs> It's through the dancing. It's amazing. And that's kind of like, like the original movie has almost like been taken down a notch for me or is like, why didn't you utilize the dancing more? Yeah. Like, like that's brilliant. And the witches, really the dancing is. is how they conduct spells. And, and the way that that's introduced. <laughs> well, yeah, you see Tilda Swinton touches her hands, touches her feet, and you see just a glimmer of like, her, they glow just slightly. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed that. I didn't. Like, yeah, until someone touches her hands, and there's just a real, like, subtle glow. Where it's like, oh, she's putting a spell on her, mm -hmm. which leads to one of the most horrific scenes I've seen in a movie in recent years. When comparing it to the original, it's kind of the same. You know, you need that initial jolt, that early on jolt, that first act jolt, and yeah. that's the one that you get with Pat Hingle and the glowing eyes and everything. Like that's what you get in this scene. Well, the, the real dance scene, going, similar to the first scene where she's dancing with no music, like the real dance scene, has, it looks violent. It does. Like it's so, like the movements are so sharp. Mm -hmm. So, the, the, and the, the movie is so like meticulously edited, like it's so precise. And the cutting back and forth between Dakota Johnson dancing and, and Olga just getting like distorted. It's, and then oh, it's brilliant. Like, at one point she like, like pisses herself and it's just so like humiliating yeah, and, and disgusting. Just the, like distending skin and like yeah. the bones starting to like, it's, it's, 
you don't expect it at all. Yeah. It was it, it comes kind of out of nowhere, but it's it's again it's serving that notice of just like here's what we're doing. Yeah. We're not fucking around. You're like, oh, <laughs> it's this kind of movie. Yeah. And then just like the original, then it can slow down for a while because mm -hmm. now you you know what it's capable of. You know what the witches can do <laughs> to you. Yes. <laughs> Well, the worst part is that she's laying there and just like this lumpy mess on the ground. Yeah. She's still not dead. No. And then they come in with like fucking meat we hooks look. and it's just like, <laughs> ugh. That, was, that might have been the worst part for me. Just like <laughs> that, the, 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 the reveal of the meat hooks before they grab it, just like, yeah. oh no. Well, just, and also the, uh, uh, that scene, as far as the sound design, the sound in the whole movie is great, mm -hmm. but... It's, it's like constantly raining. Yes. And especially the scenes when they're in like the, the dance rehearsal area, you just hear that rain pounding on the building. Would you like to say something, Susie? Um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and it really adds that discomforting, you know, what would have, would have been in the score in the original is just more taken with the sound design. Mm -hmm. When you were dancing, what did it feel like? inside you, inside your body. It felt like what I think it must feel like to fuck. You mean to fuck a man? No, I was thinking of an animal. <laughs> well, well, Dakota Johnson very quickly kind of goes up the ranks and, and becomes, uh, she develops a bond with Madame Blanc, to yes. the Swinton's character. Uh, which is, is, is kind of touching in a way. There, there is like more of a sympathy for, like we mentioned, there's more of an emphasis on the, the older characters in this one. Well, yeah, um, but there's also initially, I mean, we're already, the witches are talking about, oh, we were grooming Pat to do this, and that didn't work out. If they found out I was here, they won't hesitate. And now are we gonna groom Sarah or we're looking at Susie. Yeah. And Madame Blanc is very specifically focused on Susie. I think already kind of has a sense of what she can do and that how she can be groomed into this, right. you know, vessel or whatever. Yeah. Well, and that's that's what I really like about the movie is I, I like the kind of weird dreamlike quality of the original, but a lot of horror that I really like is when there's a real clear uh, kind of mythology and there's specific rules and there's a way everything operates. So the kind of hierarchy of witches and the, the structure of, like there's the, the scene where they're voting of when they do the ceremony, who's going to be sort of infused with the spirit of Mother Suspiriorum. And it's just this great shot that keeps kind of spinning around the room as everybody votes. And But then later in the movie, we see them all to uh, appear as normal people. They're all out to dinner. Right. And they're all laughing and joking and all the, the students are kind of looking in the window, but they're having a real conversation telepathically. Yep. And I just, I love all those details. Yeah. Das stimmt. Und es ist gut, dass Susi uns so sieht. Immer noch ein Teil der Welt. It really fleshes out the world of the witches and also the, the real world of like what was really happening in uh, or Berlin at the time, which kind of makes the, the witch stuff feel more realistic. Absolutely. The fact that they kind of exist in the same world. Yeah. And at that same time, Susie and Sarah are getting to be friends. Very similar to the original. Really, to me, in the remake, they, it, it felt a lot more important and full, the friendship. Mm, like, sure. there was a point where um, Susie's not feeling well and she's in her bed and Sarah's going to climb in bed with her and say, oh, my sisters used to do that. Like, I'm your sister now. Yeah. You know, and it really feels more like there's a, more of a bond between them than in the original, where it's just like, oh, we're buddies and there's something crazy going on and we're going to figure it out. Yeah, that's what's weird about this movie is there's incredibly unsettling sequences. It's, it's very uh, atmospheric and gloomy, mm -hmm. but then there's also a real warmth to certain aspects of it. Yeah. Like their relationship or uh, Susie's relationship with uh, uh, Madame Blanc. Mm -hmm. Uh, and especially with the Joseph character, yes. who we should probably get into, also played by Tilda Swinton. They were vorher bei der Kripo in Friedenau, nicht wahr? Sie haben versucht, mir zu helfen, meine Frau wiederzufinden. Which some people say is distracting. I didn't think about it for a second when I was watching the I, movie. I mean, you kind of hear it with the voice. A little like bit. They could maybe have pitched the voice or something, yeah. but... The makeup's really good. That's what really sells it, yeah. because old age makeup is so hard. Like, you see so many movies where it just looks, like, rubbery or something looks off. Yeah. Or you get that, like, uh, kind of uncanny valley effect. Why did Ridley Scott let his 12-year-old son do the makeup for Waylon? I mean, if you didn't know it was Tilda Swinton, 
uh, I think the voice is kind of a giveaway, but yeah. just looking at it, like the way she carries her body movements, mm -hmm. like everything. And she doesn't, facially, she doesn't look like Tilda Swinton. Mean, he doesn't look like Tilda Swinton at all. Not at all. No. no. Just looks like an old German guy. Yeah, but he's, uh, uh, is he, he's like a psychiatrist, mm -hmm. I guess. And uh, at the beginning, Patricia comes to him. And she's, I mean, this is where she just flat out says, yeah, there's witches. Ich hatte recht. Sie sind Hexen. Yeah. It's the opening scene of the movie. In the original, you have Susie kind of investigating what's going on in the school. And but what does it mean to be a witch? In the new one, it's she's not really investigating. She's just trying to work her way up the ranks. She's living um, her dream. Yeah, but you have the <laughs> Joseph character. What is this? This is Patricia's diary. Kind of is the one sort of on the outside of the yeah. school trying to figure out what happened to Patricia. And the witches decide to co-opt him and bring him in kind of as, I think, as an observer. A witness, yeah, a witness, for, their, for their big ceremony that they're leading yeah. up to. They decide he's going to be a witness because they don't want it to be someone from the school. Right. Uh, but we learn about, you know, his past and it's so like tragic where he got separated from his wife during World War II and has, for years has had to live with the fact that he has no idea what happened to her. And it's like, this isn't a mo horror movie about witches. Yeah. And it's so, like, yeah. moving yeah. and well done. You know, the idea that if you're going to have, particularly we're talking about the female, you know, based nature of each, like, you've got a male character, and that male character is such a locus of, yeah, of, of sympathy and tragedy. Yeah. As just like, Played by a woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But in the context of the movie, that doesn't matter. No, no, no. Um, uh, but you've got a whole different way to, to refocus, you know, who you're concerned about. Glauben Sie etwa an Hexen, Doktor? Nee. Aber dass Leute sich manchmal zusammenschließen, um Verbrechen zu begehen und das dann Magie nennen. He is the one that goes to the cops, which leads to a really <laughs> Curious scene. <laughs> Say a curious scene. Um, just, I guess the witches put him in a trance. Meanwhile, Susie just kind of wanders off. <laughs> Oddly enough, it's the second movie I saw last year that had uh, uh, women laughing at someone's dick. That happens in Mandy, too. But it's great too, you mentioned that, yeah, they're trying to get, figure out what happened to Patricia. Uh, the fact that there's mentions of like, oh, she probably went off to join the, those terrorists. And yeah. It's like, again, co draw, uh, connecting it to reality. Yeah, because she, she was already seen as a radical in the school yeah. and she was, you know. But just that, that like constant like reminding you, like yeah. this is the real world. This is the real world. This, yeah. We're not in, in uh, Dario Argento fantasy land. Where no, it's looks very like grounded. A, like a candy colored nightmare. <laughs> well, it's very, very grounded. Yeah, again, just every time you look out the front window, there's the fucking Berlin Wall. Yes. Like, you can't get away from it. There's another scene, I'm I don't remember exactly in the chronology where it is happening, but she's performing again, and you see Mother Marcos. One, two, three, four. One. <laughs> Similar to the original movie, you keep hearing about Mother Marcos. Never you don't see her. See her. Uh, you see her even less in the new one because That's true. in the original you see uh, her wheezy silhouette or whatever. But yeah, there's that moment where Susie's dancing. You see this hand it's withered. Oh, yeah, <laughs> just just like, what the fuck is hand. What <laughs> you up to the up to the ceiling, and Susie's performance takes on the sexual edge. particularly in that scene where it's like she's writhing almost like she's having an orgasm. And so there's that connection there. And so it, you start to wonder if maybe there's a bit of a, a bit of a fight between Marcos and Blanc. Yeah, well that's, that's yeah, compared to the original where you have Madame Blanc is, she's just at the school and she turns out to be a witch, but there's nothing really important about her. Yeah. In this one, Madame Blanc is a really important character, the Tilda Swinton character. And she's the head of the school basically in terms of the dance. Yeah, and everyone, you know, people mention like, where's Madame Marcos? Cause they know that she's the one that's you know, even higher up than right. Madame Blanc. So there is this sort of power struggle going on. Yeah. So Dr. Klemper uh, gets in touch with Sarah and brings her off campus and shows her um, Patricia's diaries. Mother Marcos, Mother Meinhof, Satan's rehearsal, political action. These two areas in Patricia's life were of equal importance. The, the exposition in this version feels a little more organic than the original movie. Definitely. It's like in the original where it's like, here's the exposition scene now. Thanks, Udo Kier. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why it's so helpful to have, you know, Klemper involved from the beginning, but also yeah. have him be the witness 
Th this is one of the things I was really surprised to see them uh, c kind of delve into is the, the Three Mothers mythology. Yeah, 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 yeah. Three mothers lost in time, predating all Christian invention. Pre-God, pre-Devil. Mother Tenebrarum, Mother Lacrimarum, and Mother Suspiriorum. There's a whole scene in this movie where they talk about that, because that's, if you're unfamiliar, the Suspiria, the original Dario Argento film, kind of retroactively became the first part of a trilogy called the Three Mothers Trilogy, which the second one was Inferno, uh, and then he followed it up many, many years later with Mother of Tears. Right. The less said about that one, the better. <laughs> Woof. <laughs> I don't know if Luca Guadagnino has any plans to adapt those down the line. I, I would so. love to see him remake Mother of Tears and make something cool, but... But yeah, and that really, like, that speaks again to what we're talking about, where they take the littlest things from the original yeah. and flesh them out and make them a full thing. Well, in the original Suspiria, that's not even a thing. Right, it so wasn't he's, until taken, he's taken it from, from Inferno. Inferno. Inferno sets that up, and yeah. then Mother of Tears even more so. It's actually yeah. funny, in Mother of Tears... Uh, Udo Kier shows up again, different character, sure. but again, this exposition man. I've been expecting you. Uh, and he really <laughs> goes into the three mothers. There's okay. you know, the mother of size, the mother of darkness, and the mother of tears. Uh, and it's bizarre in Mother of Tears because he actually mentions Susie Banyan by name and he talks about the events that happened at the dance academy. I was like, this is weird. Martha Suspiriorum, the mother of size, settled in Freiburg. A young dancer named Susie Banyan finally managed to kill her. Like, that doesn't... I like the idea that they're just sort of very loosely connected by the fact that there's these three different witches. Yeah. Um, but the fact that this movie even went into it, and when I saw this in the theater and they start bringing that up, I was like, <laughs> I was what? so surprised. I was yeah. like, this is awesome. Yeah. Again, fleshing things out, world building. For I, sure. I really, really loved that. I really liked the design of, of Pat's diaries and the way that they set all that up with the circles and all the diagrams and everything. Yeah. Like, yeah. The little details and stuff like that that's all throughout. Right. We've gotten to the point where Sarah's counting the steps. They took that pretty pretty much as verbatim, yeah. but something else happens. <laughs> she doesn't she doesn't fall into a fucking barbed wire room. <laughs> Jesus Christ! She oh. discovers Pat. It's all over now. I'll get you out. The performance is starting upstairs. That was really unsettling. The shots of no feet, and no hands, yeah. and just like. <laughs> Yeah, and all and the design there too, where it's really dark and and you're, you're straining for for details. Yes, is uh, really smart. Things kind of fall into darkness. Yeah, and and you're you're like glimpses of something. Yeah, you got to squint a little bit to see it. Yeah, uh, which I was feeling kind of the same thing, like bits and pieces at the end of Hereditary. I love stuff like that, and where it's you know even more in this movie it's just it's it's you're you're straining hard for details and you don't get all of them i was definitely surprised to see tony collette on the ceiling in the background in this movie yeah was that was not a shock i was not expecting that <laughs> so she's i mean you know i guess this in a way it's the same thing which is that she's running away and torture happens but it's a whole different way yeah <laughs> and then as soon as that bone pops through her leg the witches just go Phoop. yeah <laughs> It was like, we can do this to you, and you're healed, and you're ours now. Go dance. Yes. Yeah, now she's essentially a zombie under their control. Yeah. Uh, but this all leads to the, the big dance yeah. uh, that the movie's been leading up to. And I, I love the design of their outfits. So I cool. love the, the, the editing of that whole dance sequence. is just fantastic. Yeah, even just that, the, the Dakota Johnson's just like the swipes of makeup yeah. on her face. And with the soundtrack. Yeah. Which, so that's, yeah, this whole scene is supposed to be the, uh, it's the ceremony, basically, and it doesn't go quite as planned because Susie's just, uh, <laughs> she, she, she goes out of step from everybody to do her own thing because she thinks she knows what's best and fucks it up. And so that's when they kind of decide to, that they have to change their plans, which leads to the, the real ending of the movie. Right. Susie and Madame Blanc have that long discussion where it's like, you fucked with our, you know, you fucked up our thing, don't do that anymore. But on the other hand, we won't make you watch our dreams. Why is everyone so ready to think the worst is over? 
Yeah, we should mention that yeah. uh, to kind of like condition Susie into this world. Uh, Madame Blanc is like putting these dreams in her head every night. Right, which is where a lot of the surreal parts of the film get to do that's, some work. <laughs> that's where, aside from the couple of really horrific scenes, that's where the horror aspects of the movie are. These really kind of like quick cut. Yeah. Uh, and they're actually, if you go back and watch the movie, there's a lot of information given in those scenes mm -hmm. that, that kind of pays off later on. At one point, there's a there's a heart on the ground. Yeah. It's like, I'm assuming that's a reference to the beginning of the original. I would think with, so. With the heart, we did, I would think the trailer, so. trailer, the, the beating Suspiria letters. Oh, maybe. that too. I was just thinking of the, when the heart's getting stabbed in but the original. But maybe both. Maybe both. Yeah. They never reference the, we haven't mentioned the teaser trailer to the original Suspiria and how it's the greatest thing ever. It's so good. Even though it has nothing to do with the movie. <laughs> Combing hair and you turn around, oh my God, it's a spooky skeleton. Oh no. But uh, yeah, it would have been <laughs> nice to fucking... work that into the dreams in the new movie somehow. And then we go out to Dr. Klemper. Yes, well he keeps going back to, I guess it's his old house, yeah, right? Yeah, it's and like this, the country house. They keep yeah, and they got a little etched heart on yeah. the wall with him and his, his wife's name. Anka is her name. Anka, yeah. And uh, this was a bit of a shock. I yeah. didn't know this was in the movie. All of a sudden, Anka appears to him. If you don't, if you've not seen the original, it's just like, oh, his wife is there. But if you've seen the original, it's Jessica fucking Harper. Yes, the original <laughs> Susie Banyan. Yeah, so that's a real gut punch. Yeah, like I mentioned, the, this movie has you know kind of a warmth and there's an emotion to some of it. That's, and that that's sequence, a big, big part of it. Yeah, that that sequence when he sees her and they kind of embrace and they're walking and obviously we know as an audience like something's not right here. Yeah, but, but she's explaining everything that happened after the war. Yeah, leading kind of. It almost feels like they're recreating a date, like yes. where they're walking through, yeah. you know, walking through Berlin. Uh, on another level, if you're familiar with the original, then there's your connection to the original with yeah. Jessica Harper. And it's like, it's like this whoa. Is great. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's so fucking jarring, too, because it. it, it there's that haunting moment where he turns and she's not there anymore. Uh -huh. And then there's just that witch screaming as she runs towards the ah! camera. <laughs> You're like, holy Fuck shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he ends up uh, naked and wailing. <laughs> Lying on the side going, I didn't do it, what the fuck? Well, this is, I mean, the movie is so subdued up until this point. It's very, there's a horrific moments, but it all uh, feels very, like, realistic in a lot of ways. And then we get to this sequence, and it's just this big, yeah. elaborate ceremony. Just, just fucking like, phantasmagoria, I, I red. I probably won't show too many clips from it, because it's just nothing but naked people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and there's the dancing, like, the crazy, again, like, like orgasmic, orgiastic kind of dancing, where it's, like, very yes. primal. But this is where we see Mother Marco's Tilda Swinton in her, her third role in the film is this, this fucked up little goblin. Yep. Oh, there's something wrong here. Can you not feel it? This is not right. Some of the witches are aware that something is, well, this again, is not the, right. The, the division of the, uh, yep. the power struggle that's going on with the, the hierarchy of these witches. Yeah, and, and there's a corruption happening here. Yes, yes. And Madame Marcos is hungry with power. Yes. And, th and this is the, the big reveal that I'm, I'm curious how it would play for somebody that isn't familiar with the original movie. We've w run the joke into the ground of saying that movies subvert your expectations in the wake of, of Ryan Johnson and The Last Jedi, but this is a case of subverting your expectations in a way that's incredibly satisfying. Absolutely. For whom were you anointed? Mother Suspiriorum. I am she. Holy shit. Uh, Susie Banyan, our Suspiria protagonist, has been the embodiment of Mother Suspiriorum all along. Oh. How well, how much she has been aware of it, we don't know. We don't know. That's but left vague. There's a flashback to Susie's a kid in her her little farmhouse, and, mm -hmm. and all of her siblings are around. They're doing schoolwork, and they're looking at maps. And she keeps flipping to Berlin. Yeah. Uh, and then you know they're like, no, that's not. We're we're studying this. I don't know if they're talking about the U.S. or something, but. There's, there's, going back to she it. keeps going back to, she to like Berlin. Scratched out in pencil. Yeah, and it's like, is that Suspiriorum just like implanting this in her brain at an early age? Because it's not like she's not in complete control. Yeah, and initially when I saw that, I thought maybe she had already she already knew about the dance company, and maybe there would like that was an early sort of just like that's where I've got to go, and I'm going to be a dancer, and like not in retrospect. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it's so like th that whole sequence, and then like the idea that. 
<laughs> that Dakota Johnson as Mother Suspiriorum is just like, fuck you, Marcos, you're a fraud, and yep. now I'm going to raise a demon from the ground to make everybody that voted for you's head explode. <laughs> And this is where we break from the reality of the film. Oh, yeah. We're, which we're... maybe takes some people out of it. I don't know. To me, it's like we've done enough to, to earn this. Death to any other mother. Mother Suspiriorum is so badass that she can conjure a demon. Yep. She's going to set everything right. She's just, she's, fuck you and fuck you and fuck you. You're cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's the scene. Yeah. It is. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. You're cool. And fuck you. I'm out. But then, like, this pretty t uh, Tom York song plays. It's not like this graphic, blah, gross, like, evil dead horror scene. No. It's, 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 it's very, in its way, it's very calm for all the chaos that's happening. What do you ask? To die. Mother Suspiriorum comes in to talk to the three sacrificial girls. Yeah, she's and very just, calming. What, 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 what do you want? Just to die? Like, okay, you got it. Boom. You, just, you, you are in this position because all, the, all these, these idiots yeah. were following a, a, a false leader. What can this I do for you? This is not your fault. I want to help you. Yeah. The only thing I don't really like is they, they, they kind of do this like shutter speed uh, thing. And I don't know if that's to conceal the visual effects of the heads exploding yeah. uh, or what, but... It didn't bother me. It, it's just it's so drastically different than everything else in the movie. Yeah, but I guess I was kind of okay with it, again, because there was just so much chaos going on anyway. Yeah. This is already very different from the rest of the movie. Yeah. I do love, though, at, towards the end of it, when they cut to that big wide shot and everybody's dancing, and it's doing that that, that fluttery effect, but yeah. then it slowly goes back to, to kind of reality. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's just a room full of, of bloody head guts and... Uh, screaming naked girls. Screaming naked people. <laughs> <laughs> if, if this was an Argento movie, it would cut to credits right there. Right. <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> Dr. Klemper is, is, is kind of in a trance, but he's set free. and let <laughs> go, go away. I love that shot of him leaving the building. He's like, his clothes are disheveled. It's like yeah. the guy like leaving a drunken party the next yeah. morning. It's like a weird walk of shame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do last oh, night? Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, a Susie comes to visit. Yeah. Well, and this is, is where that? like you you would not expect this kind of emotional sequence in. Yeah. A, a witch horror film, but no. it's just, yeah, she comes in and again, she's very calming. Well, she's, she's I mean, she's the mother yeah. at this point and she's, she's not Susie anymore, I guess. She's, yeah, she's <laughs> full on Suspiriorum yeah. at this point. I believe you deserve to know the truth. Your wife did try to make it south to Teplitsa. She was then taken to Theresienstadt camp. Years and years of not knowing, and now he's and it. One, Tilda Swinton is a great actress, but two, being able to convey the range of emotions that's going through her mind as she's finally he's finally learning what happened to his wife. Yeah, under all that makeup, and it's With, just wordless. Yeah, just just through the expression and the and the physicality of it, just yeah. like holy shit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really just, really incredible. Yeah, that uninterrupted monologue, Dakota Johnson. And she's just fantastic by that point. She, the way she's just, she embodies a different character. Yeah, you can tell there's a switch. She, yeah. she is not the same person anymore. Yeah. Wir brauchen Schuld. Doktor. Und Scham. Aber nicht deine. You know, that's, that's the idea is that uh, the witches are going to, Maybe there's going to be some retribution for some people, and they, uh, they're going to feed on some guilt and feed on some sadness, and, but not yours. You don't deserve it. Yeah. You need to earn it. Uh, I, I think the fact that we've talked about it for twice as long as the original is a, a testament to how interesting it is. Well, it is um, almost twice as long as the original. <laughs> that's true. I guess that's worth pointing out. The yeah. movie is two and a half hours. This is, you got to set a day aside to watch this. That's the thing. I, initially, I really was worried about that. Like, two and I, a half hours? I was hours? a little bit, too. I was, like, interested in seeing the movie. Um, 
but it was like, uh, is this going to be, and, and I think some people complain that it's like, oh, it's bloated. We don't need all this real world, uh, you know, the, the what's going on in Berlin at the all time. That. We don't need this stuff. And to me, it's like, no, that yeah. all fills out the movie can, and, and yeah. is what makes it interesting to me. When I was thinking of like places that somebody would have cut, yeah, like would have been some of that stuff, some of the more, you know, stuff with the cops. And probably some more out of the the whole thing. The whole ceremony probably could have been tightened up. Yeah. There's, you know, it takes a long time there. Um, and you know what? I wouldn't have touched a minute of it because that pace is what makes the movie for me. Yeah. It really like it never felt like it was dragging. It's, it's everything. The yeah. tempo. It's it's a slow tempo, but it means that tempo. It's slow. It means... It's atmospheric, mm -hmm. and it, yeah, it always feels like it's building towards something. Absolutely. And I didn't feel it. Didn't feel long. When no, I was and I mean that's the. I think that's Roger Ebert once said. No, no good movie is too long, and no bad movie is short enough. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's the length that needs to be. Yeah, uh, it's not for everybody, but then again, neither is the original. No, so, uh, <laughs> it really it, it stuck with me. Like it, I, I thought about it for a good long time after I watched. It. I, I haven't stopped thinking about it since yeah. I saw it in the theater. It just and the 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 Tom York the main theme the Suspirium song I get it stuck in my head all the sure, time. Sure, sure. Everything that could have gone wrong with a remake, none of it does. Yeah. And it just, it, it's, it's, it's what every remake should be. Yeah, it's fantastic. Wow. Oh. The acting, fantastic. The score, the editing, the direction, the choreography, all the dancing, so much dancing. <laughs> <laughs> so much actual real dancing. The dancing was spectacular. <laughs> What's on the poster now? <laughs> oh, it's a dancing film. Oh, I like dance films. I, I wanna go see that. Yeah. Oh my God, that woman's been turned into a pretzel. Oh.